Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for signing on to this webinar uh, today. It's the third of our partnerships with Digital Boost. And today we're going to focus on the fundamentals of digital and your presence online with with very much a COVID filter. So it's it's around touching on the basics. And for those of you who really want um, a little bit more, who want a bit more in depth, can I assure you that our state that the program that we've planned will help and support that. So our next session is a little bit more um, specialized in that on the 25th of February, we plan to do an online booking uh, uh, webinar for experiences, visitor attractions, tours and activities. So that hopefully will suit many of you. After that, we have a series of six programs of six webinars which will deep dive into the individual elements that Andrew will cover off today. So uh, a much greater dive into search engine, engine optimization, uh, have a look at Google Analytics. We're going to look at intermediate social media, some Google Analytics and reputation management. management. So some really good topics coming your way. Uh, we're going to primarily try and deliver all of that in March because we, we hopefully will be looking at uh, some reopenings by then. So throughout this webinar, Andrew will be going through several topics. But what I would encourage you as you go along, it helps us, is to ask some questions. There's a question functionality on the control board you'll see on, on your um, desktop or laptop. If you fire the questions in now, it lets us get our heads around us and look to answer it. So we look to answer as much as possible of those at the end of this session. Um, so I think we're ready to go, Andrew. If you, I will sign off, uh, enjoy your webinar. Thanks, Patrick. And good afternoon, everybody. I'll just switch my own. Today, we're looking at a few of the, the very important digital touch points that visitors will surface on whilst planning any trips. And I want to, to give you some uh, practical tips that you can immediately put in place to improve your business's digital marketing. Now, I'm uh, a bit of a, a film buff, and uh, or at least I like to think of myself, and perhaps um, today will not give you the, the magnificent seven, but we'll give you seven key aspects, seven key areas we'll consider with the main goal being increasing the number of bookings and reservations that your business is taking. I hope there'll be something uh, today for everyone in what we're discussing. And um, I'll be around to answer questions later, as Patrick just mentioned, we'll be having a question and answer session later on. So here are the, the seven aspects, seven Magnificent seven that we'll be we'll be covering today, and I hope there's something there for everybody. So let's start off things off with the information that you're giving to customers and potential customers. And the first thing I'd like to say is you want to get the key messages across. The information you share with um, potential customers plays a significant role in their decision to become paying customers. And recent research from Google has found that cleanliness and hygiene are now the highest consideration when planning travel alongside price. So what are you doing to get that message across? Um, you should ensure that your potential customers are aware that uh, a visitor experience at your business will be as safe as it can be and that hygiene and cleanliness are top priorities. And I'm, I've just been going through, you'll be seeing on the screen here, I've been going through some good examples that I found from uh, Wild West, from Ben Alder Estate. This is a good one from uh, Blue Wild Boats. They've got a, some excellent messages on social media. And then Forestry and Land Scotland have a, a great banner visible at the top of the page. <clears throat> and what I would say to you is how, do, how does, what you're seeing there, how does that relate to what you have in your own website? Well, make sure that when you're giving uh, visitors information that you're uh, writing easy to read text, plain English, split pages into appropriate headings, use bullets and numbers for lists, and put the most important information at the top, as you can see there from, uh, 
from Forest uh, Land Scotland. Regularly check all your uh, COVID-related links to ensure they're working and are giving up to date information. Later on, I'm going to in the chat. I'll distribute a, a very handy checklist from Business Gateway that gives some hints and tips and and how and where you should be keeping your customers up to date. And one other thing you can do is you maybe notice at the top of the the Forest and Land Commission website there's a very nice uh, banner that gives immediate information to visitors to your website. That's done through, well, or you can do that through something called Google Optimize. With that, you can now add a banner to the top of your website that allows visitors to see immediately any key messages that you want to pass on. You can select which of which pages of your site the banner should be shown on. For example, here we've got the Chocolatarium, and that's immediately <coughs> business in, in Edinburgh. At the top of their website, you've got that very visible COVID secure policy uh, button at the top of their website. You can also customise the colour as they've done there, the size and text to make it more formatted to what the rest of your website looks like. I'd also encourage you all to consider having a, a dedicated page on your website that enables uh, linking from social media, from Google posts and from other PR to continue driving web uh, web traffic. A, a dedicated page on uh, your, your, your COVID policy is a, a great example. Again, it's from what happens in the Chocolatarium website. Uh, they do this extremely well and just injecting just the right amount of, of humour into that. So have a look at their website later on, perhaps. And then secondly, communicate your business updates on this website. Consider any considerations for employees and customers, perhaps community resources and any additional steps that your business is taking at this time to ensure <coughs> or as you reopen to ensure visitor and guest safety. Second thing I want to look at is reputation and reassurance. Now, reputation and reassurance is often thought of as, as a reactive tool, but it's not. It's a very important lever to help you maximise uh, your conversions and turn, uh, turn them, as many conversions as possible into actual bookings. The, the main challenge is keeping your eye on all three of the, the, the main platforms where people leave reviews. I would put Google at the top, secondly TripAdvisor, and then Facebook. I suppose if you're, a, if you're an accommodation business, often you'll get reviews on uh, the likes of the OTAs, Booking.com, Expedia, uh, and Airbnb. Um, if your customers leave a complimentary comment on a review platform about the safe, uh, clean, hygienic experience they've had at your business, you really have struck gold and you should make sure you're promoting any such uh, testimonials on your website as well. How are you supposed to manage and uh, keep track of all of that <coughs> user-generated content? You can't just keep track of it by dipping in and out as, as and when is is required. You need um, help and tools, or there are sorry, help and tools to, to help you stay on top of it. Uh, and I'm going to go through some tools just now to that maybe give you a bit of inspiration on, on how to do that. Business Gateway again have a very uh, useful document on managing your business reputation during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Google Alerts is a free tool that helps you monitor the web for mentions of your brand name. You can use it to check for mentions where there are uh, no links to your website and see if you can get this changed. Secondly, Hootsuite is primarily aimed at uh, managing your social media comments and any responses, especially reviews on Facebook. Bazumo, or Bazumo is for trends and content, ideas and discovery. Sprout Social is for social media and uh, review responses. It's integrated with um, Google My Business. It's integrated with TripAdvisor and Facebook. Uh, Brand24 is for brand mentions across social media, news blogs, forums, etc. And then finally, reputation 
has a, a, is a response platform that's solely aimed at helping hospitality, mainly aimed, sorry, at, at helping hospitality businesses to respond uh, on the review platforms. Why is this important? Well, these figures that you can see on the screen just now, excuse me, demonstrate how much how much visitors value their their peers and the user generated content of other visitors or friends and family. The last two slides were basically looking at how you manage what's said about you online. And the next couple that I'd like to, to focus on are why you should do that, i.e. from a reassurance perspective. That actually, coincidentally, that 87% figure is also the current average for TripAdvisor's positive uh, restaurant reviews. I know we've got a few restaurants and food and drink establishments on here today. Uh, so the, the average at the moment on a TripAdvisor worldwide is 80, uh, sorry, in the UK is 87%. That's actually a jump from 78%, which was the, the average prior to lockdown. There has certainly been an emergence of uh, COVID-19 related reviews. It's a new sentiment uh, category, especially relating to restaurants on TripAdvisor. These are mainly positive. The average on TripAdvisor at the moment in terms of COVID sentiment is around 68%, with ratings currently averaging around 4.3%. So keep an eye, especially just now on those, any COVID-19 related, COVID related reviews that you might be receiving. And in this huge need for reassurance, <coughs> use all the tools at your disposable, disposal, sorry, including Visit Scotland's uh, quality assurance grading scheme uh, to promote uh, the, the quality of your business and to, to give reassurance to potential uh, visitors and, and guests. I've got some ideas there of what you can, where you should be reassuring potential visitors and guests. And then a great, Great quote from the American uh, author, or he was American, he's, he's now passed away, the American author Zig Ziglar, massive appetite for information. There's a, a, a pent up need to holiday, but there's a real insecurity and worry for safety. So the importance of reassurance and trust is really emphasized by this quote from the, the late Zig Ziglar. Some say there is a need actually to overstate our procedures uh, in order to keep visitors and communities um, safe, feel, to make them feel safe and welcome. Here's a few very good examples um, of visitor and local community reassurance um, around COVID-19 on websites. Um, Nestwalk, I really like the one from Nestwalk with the, the concept of introducing safely sound. It's a, a brilliant little catchphrase that. If feasible, perhaps you can create a, a virtual experience um, to show visitors how safe they'll be when they arrive at your business. Sales Scotland has done something very um, very nice with a 360 degree virtual reality video on Sky. That shows that your business is still active even if you can't be open uh, just now. And if you, I think most of you will already be aware of this scheme, but if you're not, um, there's the website there, goodtogoscotland.com. You should be aware of the, the Good To Go scheme that Visit Scotland offers in partnership with uh, Visit England, Wales and Northern Ireland. And it just is a, a kite mark that gives further assurance to potential guests and visitors. Social media, next on the agenda today. Prior to COVID-19 pandemic, um, Visit Scotland conducted a, a a substantial piece of research into the traveller decision making process. And during this research, we analysed every click, every interaction that travellers were making and found that um, often for the most important decisions, such as accommodation, mode of transport, choice of destination, there will be hundreds, sometimes thousands of interactions and clicks during the process, both in terms of website video visits and social media posts, communications and review research. So here's some very helpful tips on social media uh, from our social media team at Visit Scotland. From a social media perspective, you should tailor your message to make it appropriate for each channel. So it's, it's easy to think oh, I've got a product to sell and then to put it out 
on on every channel, rather than actually thinking, okay, what type of person um, am I am I seeking to attract? Also, what type of per what person is on Pinterest? What type of person is on Instagram, Twitter, and what is going to be what which of my content is going to be most attractive to them? A, a saying in our um, social media department is that content is king, but engagement is queen and we all know who's in charge of the house so by from with that in mind find out the time when the maximum number of your audience on social media is active and post just before that at the moment and this is very um covid related try to be aware of the tone you use in social media show empathy perhaps even a degree of hope and always appear as welcoming and friendly as possible as of course well as well as of course displaying a, a concern for the the community your business is in be consistent it, it may have been very difficult to remain posting on social media channels during the pandemic but even if it's just once a week, do it consistently and, and ramp it up as we get closer to reopening. Social media algorithms love consistency. It's a time of huge change. So if you need to adapt and learn or change the way you do things, look at your competitors, look at what others are doing, check what works, check what doesn't work, and adapt your behavior on social media as a, as a consequence of that. Some more uh, helpful tips, create a series of posts, uh, something that somebody was saying to me just the other day, I thought it was excellent. Create a series of posts related to your business, to your customers and employees. Communicate any changes at your locations that local communities need to be aware of, uh, including uh, accommodation changes, if, you're, if your business is related to accommodation or if it is accommodation. Um, but make accommodation for delivery services or updates to business practices, social distancing, updated hours. Inform your audience about uh, sanitization efforts, the sanitizer stations throughout your location, or perhaps if you've been implementing more uh, prof frequent professional cleaning services, share how your employees are taking precautions seriously. For example, staying at home if they don't feel well, washing their hands. It's, it sounds very simple, but it's a reassurance, again, going back to what we were saying, a reassurance to potential customers. And post all of your major updates um, on your channels to ensure that your followers are aware of what your, your, your plans are. Consider what other content as well your business can post to keep spirits up. Share positive news. It's happening around your locality, acts of kindness, acts of service that you've seen um, to help keep your um, audience calm, to inspire positivity. And you might not even necessarily be sharing content to not pertaining to COVID-19 is completely acceptable as well. Just be aware of um, intent and how it can be how it can be perceived. Here are a few examples. Uh, using our only in Scotland hashtag that I thought were that I found on social media excellent, um, not Facebook of course. Have you used the only in Scotland hashtag on your own social media yet? Use it on Instagram and Twitter where appropriate. Be bold in your messaging. Make a statement. If you do so, the likelihood you get a far greater likelihood of Visit Scotland picking up your messaging too. Uh, join in the conversation if someone shares something brilliant perhaps it relates to your own business or what you offer join in that conversation and use inspiring images and video content to uh, enthuse potential and existing customers one final thing make sure you request permission and give credit where it's due if they're not your own uh, images quite a complicated looking slide but this is actually visit scotland's social media activity planner it's been stripped back uh, this year due to cancellations and COVID enforced changes, but it gives you a top level view of, of what we're going to be focusing on over the forthcoming months. 
you should mention just now that this um, session is being recorded, so you'll be able to watch this again and maybe pause uh, this slide and see if there's anything here that perhaps you could tag along with uh, for your own business. So moving on from social media onto search engine, listen, uh, engine listings, and for this, I want to specifically focus on Google My Business and Bing Places. First things first with related to Google My Business, check how your business is listed on Google. Have you claimed and verified your Google My Business listing? Have you given as much information as possible in the knowledge graph? Are you displaying availability and booking options, both for accommodation, that's uh, Google Hotel Finder, and non-accommodation, that's reserved with Google? Um, as I mentioned, respond to reviews, both good and bad, as much as feasible. Google reviews were on hold during the initial lockdown, but um, that doesn't seem to be the case again now. So just have a check and see if there's been any reviews that have been posted in the past couple of months. Uh, it certainly uh, reviews, uh, responding to reviews, sorry, lets Google see that you're an active business. Make sure that any questions that have been asked uh, have an answer from your from your business. I've got an example here from Glenmore Lodge. It's not a good example, sadly. Um, somebody's asked a question about this dry ski slope, and Glenmore Lodge haven't responded to that. It's a local person that's responded to it. So if you see questions about your business on Google, make sure you give an official business response. Even if other folk have given a response, make sure there's an official business response as well. And make sure any um, reopening details or Temporary opening details, if appropriate, are displayed too. If your business hours have changed, update those times. Uh, you can have a temporarily closed message on your Google My Business platform too. Uh, remember, if you're reopening, to change that. And uh, update any uh, descriptions to include details about extra precautions here as well. Um, and then create a post. Give information about what's new Google Posts. Uh, give information about what's new, perhaps something that you want to share with uh, the local community, perhaps something you want to share with visitors, a blog piece, something along those lines. Offers can be placed here too as well. Uh, if your business has to um, temporarily close, then as, as well as doing it on Google, what you can also do is you can update Bing at the same time. Uh, it's the default search engine on most Windows devices, and it's actually the default search engine for Amazon Alexa. It's heavily used in North America. What I was saying there, if you already have a Google My Business listing, then you can import your business details directly from Google My Business across to Bing, and it will sync at regular intervals. So, so it will, as I was saying, it will show temporarily closed on Bing too. Incidentally, uh, conversions from, I, I got this information from Google just the other day, Incident, conversions from Google My Business knowledge panels increased significantly, or three times higher after the first uh, lockdown in the UK, with visitors um, more often choosing the uh, visit website or the call call to action buttons as opposed to direction buttons. So that shows the importance of making sure that any information that you've got on Google and Bing is, is as up to date as possible. Now, moving on to search engine optimization, we're thinking about Google My Business. This sort of ties in with search engine optimization. Some of you may find the, the concept of search engine optimization to be a tad daunting, and you may wish to leave it up to your website developers. But it's a, it's a good idea for uh, everyone running a business to have a general idea of what SEO is all about. It's about increasing the number and quality of visitors to your website, simply put, from search engine results pages without using paid um, advertising. The question then I would ask is, why invest time and effort into, into SEO? search engine optimization. Well, organic, that's non-paid search results, generally appear more credible to searchers and receive substantially more clicks than paid advertisements, such as um, Google AdWords. 
Optimising your website will help deliver uh, better information to search engines so that your content can be properly indexed and displayed within search results. Here are a few um, simple things that we're going to that I'll look at today that are hopefully um, not overly technical. Um, so, website security, more about the terms that people are searching for, um, images, devices as well. So, and we've already covered um, Google My Business. So, first thing to check on your website, and I've, I've, some of you may have seen this slide before, I've mentioned it on quite a few um, webinars over the past few months. Is it secure? Is it on HTTPS, which gets a nice smiley face? Or is it on HTTP, which doesn't get a smiley face? Uh, you should consider moving. If you're not on HTTPS, consider moving as soon as possible. It's said that Google is likely to take secure versus non-secure into account when it comes to uh, search engine results uh, ranking. Actually, a non-secure website is, I would say, is especially bad news in light of uh, COVID. It's expected, in fact, there has been a significant shift for all types of tourism businesses to booking online, as, as we'll cover later. Any degree of, of website insecurity is likely to have a negative impact on, on the visitor experience and on thus on conversion and booking rates. It's really important to try and find out what keywords, that's words and phrases, visitors are entering into a search engine when uh, researching their holiday to Scotland, especially any keywords that might be related to your um, business. I've included some tools, or as you can see on the screen there, to help you do this. Each of these tools contains very helpful research guides to give you insights as to how to choose keywords for your website. Once you've carried out some keyword research, find a natural way to use um, the relevant keywords on your website. So here are a few easy things that you can, as related to keywords, here are a few easy things that you can check and set up perhaps in conjunction with your web designer. The first thing is page titles, title tags. These appear to a user at the top of your browser uh, when they're viewing the web page and as a title in the search results page. They don't appear on the web page itself. So you can see there the title tag for Creef Hydro Hotel is a nice and easy one. Creef Hydro, Persia, Scotland's leading hotel and leisure resort. A few tips about title tags. Keep them accurate and concise. Include your primary or your main keyword and make the title tag no longer than 70 characters, uh, including spaces. Secondly, we have your meta description tag. That is a description that shows up the with the title tag on a search results page. As you can see there, there's the, the title tag, and below it, you've got the meta description tag. Sell your content here, make it sound attractive, exciting, and be clear that it's what the user is looking for. So when I click to go through to Creef Hydro, I expect to see a hotel, a spa resort hotel with 60 indoor outdoor activities and five restaurants. Again, include your primary keyword or keywords. And this time you can have up to 160 characters. And then uh, your website address and any links to pages on your website should be entirely logical and should take visitors to the, expect, the, the page they expect to reach. So if I click on uh, creefhydro.com slash special offers, I expect to see a page with special offers. I don't expect to see a page that says, come back later for special offers. Okay, that's entirely annoying to, 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 to visitors to your website. Uh, finally, think of phrases or terms that visitors might be using in light of COVID, reopening, safety, peace, quiet, getaway. Um, the next slide here is a couple of some, some examples. This is a very complex looking slide. Don't um, take too much from this at the moment, but it gives you a snapshot. This is Visit Scotland's 
keywords perspective, and it gives you a snapshot of some, not all, of the keywords that Visit Scotland has been focusing on uh, based on keyword research we've carried out. Again, you can re-watch uh, re um, this uh, webinar at a later stage and pause at this point. Feel free to use and align some of these if appropriate to your own business on your own website content or on blog posts. And then with a subject matter as lovely as Scotland, I suppose every tourism business has to include attractive images guaranteed to inspire any visitor. Images also help search engines better understand the content of your website and they can have an effect on the overall user experience on your site. So you can help search engines to read and understand your images by ensuring they've got a clear file name, um, by making sure they're relevant to the content on the page, by adding alt text so when you hover um, your mouse over the image, you'll see hopefully alt text, you may not be able to see that, but alt text appears and says bottom those dolphins in the Murray Firth, and using keywords in the alt text if possible, and as you can see from that final image, adding a caption to the image if it's possible. Try to keep the file size as, for images as small as possible without losing quality if you can. That ensures shorter loading times, and we'll come to that how important that is in just a second. There's a couple of little tools that you can use there which help you reduce um, image file sizes without really giving you a drop in image quality. Why is, why is that important? Well, um, mobile and speed have become increasingly important in the world of SEO. Here's some advice around the functionality of your website. Make sure it works on all main device types, but especially mobile. Um, you can run two tests. The first of these being a mobile friendly test on Google. If you just do a Google search for mobile friendly test, go ahead, put your website URL, put your website address in there and check that it's um, mobile friendly. Mobile friendliness is an SEO ranking factor. And then secondly, page speed insights, i.e. how quickly does your website load? And that is also an SEO ranking factor. And that page will give you a probably actually more give your web designer uh, some insights into how you can make your website load quicker. Both of these tools give you very useful ideas about possible ways to improve your website performance. So with that in mind, people have reached your website. What do you want them to do? You want them to be able to make a reservation or a booking or at least be able to see availability of tours or of a table at your restaurant or of a room at your B&B. But what I would say at this point is your business, when it comes to that, can be invisible. And it can, it, it's often the point where businesses fail. The percentage of consumers now booking travel online is estimated to be well, in fact, now that 60% was last, it was 2019's figure, that will have increased substantially since then. Um, according to uh, ABTA, around 80% of UK customers are booking holidays online. So how have you adapted your business to changes in technology, to changes in booking behaviour and customer priorities that have arisen as a result of COVID? Here is uh, some I, here's some ideas about booking systems. I, I know there's some attractions and tours and uh, activity providers on today, so there's some experience examples there, some standard accommodation examples, and some restaurant examples too. In light of the stats in the previous slide, you should all have an online booking system. COVID-19 has made the use of such a system a necessity for all tourism businesses. We estimate that around 50 to 60% of accommodation businesses in Scotland 
use an online booking system to take reservations, but far fewer in the, the non-accommodation sector, around probably 20 to 30 percent, perhaps probably over 30 percent now, uh, as, as more and more have moved to them over the past number of months. Have one. It's especially important uh, from the perspective of uh, capacity control, of making visitors and guests aware of terms and conditions, restrictions are based around geography, one-way systems perhaps in place at your venue, your cancellation policy, um, especially important from the perspective of contactless payments and ticketing, staff management, ensuring less face-to-face -face interactions, and for from a restaurant perspective, online ordering for takeaway and delivery too, as well as as, as reserving tables again when we'll, when reopening occurs. Um, it's not just, and I must stress this point here, not just an availability calendar. Um, like the kind of thing that you might see through iCal or through Google Calendars. It's a system that allows guests and visitors to make an online transaction to purchasing a hotel room, a cottage rental, an attraction ticket, space in a tour, being able to book a restaurant reservation, perhaps using their credit or debit card to secure that restaurant reservation as well. I should say, check if your booking system Further, for further distribution and, and, and increased um, promotion of your business, check if your booking system, if you're using one, has a channel manager and consider using it. A channel manager allows you to distribute your products to online travel agents and to other sources, like perhaps Visit Scotland or to, um, to Google. Online travel agents can increase your, dis will in fact increase your discoverability. Think of them as advertising spaces that you only pay for if you receive business from them. You can spend a lot of money on Google AdWords or email marketing campaigns, but they might only bring lookers, not buyers. OTAs have got loyal customers who are ready to book and will often use them instead of carrying out multiple searches online. That said, that said, after discovering a business on an OTA website, on an online travel agent website like Booking.com or Expedia or Get Your Guide, many customers will visit a business's own website to take a closer look and get more information. Many of these visitors who'd initially found a business on an online travel agent will then, if you've got the functionality, will then go on to book on that business's website. So these are extremely valuable and targeted leads that are actually coming to you at zero cost because they find your business on an OTA, haven't booked on the OTA, and then decide, okay, I'll have a look at I'll, I'll do a Google search for that business. Again, make sure your Google stuff is up to date. You and then gone straight to your website. So make sure you, your booking system, if you have one, is prominently displayed on your website. And as you're seeing the right there, the Chocolatarium and other, again, I like using them because they're a good example. They're doing things well. Many booking systems offer a connection, allowing you to sell directly on Google. Chocolatarium has done this with uh, via Reserve with, with Google. That almost wraps things up. There's one other option that I think is very interesting at the moment. It's perhaps not for everybody, and I've shown this video a, a couple of times before, so Apologies if you've already seen it, but uh, there's a, a very interesting option that Amazon are in this sort of testing. They have rolled it out, testing stage. Um, they've jumped into the mix with something called Amazon Explore, which offers a range of virtual experiences around the world. Many experiences are hosted by well-known tour companies, and they appear to all be private and while several are in the sort of 20 to 30 pounds range, others are can be quite expensive, up to 150, 200, 300 pounds. So this might be a way that you can access international customers while they're not able to visit. Some of you are already au fait, perhaps with the concept of interactive videos, but is, is this something that you might be able to expand upon? You know, for example, a, a one hour walk in the hills, a, a cooking demonstration, something along those lines. I'll, uh, hopefully this should work, but we'll have a little 
video to show you just now that gives you a bit more information. The world out there is now a little closer. Introducing a new service that takes you across the globe in an instant. Welcome to Amazon Explore. Hello, my name is Kitty. I'm your host today. Hi, Hi Kitty. Kitty. Welcome to my store in Mississippi. Thank you. So I'm looking for a new scarf. Oh, I've got great ideas. Come with me. I'm just excited to see where Grandpa grew up. Oh, you're from Mexico City. That's great. We want to surprise Mom for her birthday. She's a lucky lady. Are you ready to make some sushi? Yeah! Learn from a local expert. There's a shiny side and a little rough side. This one's not shiny. OK, you saw the difference. OK, then put the rough side up. Shop for something special. How about something like this? This is exactly my style. A little bit more down to the right. Yeah. How much is that? It's $26.50 before shipping and tax. Can I see the other side of it? Of course. OK, great. Let's get that one. OK, here's your order summary. Just approve the order, and your Amazon account will be charged. See the world through one-way video that lets you stay off screen. This is the San Juan Bautista Church. The Holy Sacrament altarpiece is the original one from the 18th century, and it is bathed in gold. I remember that. Wait, you used to go there? Yes, when I was a little kid. Wow, it's beautiful. I want to take a picture of that. All guided by a host with a skill or passion to share. Oh, 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 oh. Happy birthday to your mom. Sayonara. Your shop is very beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so very welcome. I'll get this shipped out to you right away. Adios. Thank you, Anna. This was so much fun. Your host is there to make your experience unforgettable, helping you create lasting memories and inspiring you to make new ones. To get started, select an experience that sparks your interest. Then choose a time that's convenient for you. There's always something new to experience all over the globe. Amazon Explore. The world is at your fingertips. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope that was some provided some useful information, some tips, some advice uh, that Amazon I find it very uh, interesting option there. Uh, we all use Amazon. Is it something that you could uh, use within your own business? I'll hand you back to Patrick, and we'll go into a Q and A session. Hi there. Hopefully you've got some interesting little nuggets that you can practically apply uh, from that. Andrew, thank you. That, that was great. I, I've, um, I've been busy answering some of the questions that have been coming in, which uh, I hope is useful, but still opportunity for you to ask any questions that uh, you would like to, to pose. If we don't <coughs> get to answer your question, um, and it's in, and we, we'll try we'll try and get to it. But if we don't, uh, and you still want uh, a, a specific answer to it, please email us on industry dot development at visitscotland.com. Well, there's a couple that have already come in that I'll um, look to to speak to, and uh, uh, just now while Andrew has a run through some of the questions as well. So we've had a specific question from, um, it looks like, um, I'm not sure if it's an, yeah, it looks like an experienced tour operator. Um, I really need to incorporate a booking system into my website, but it needs to link to different people's diaries. So I suppose it's not, the question isn't absolutely clear whether it's an affiliate setup you're looking for or whether you're looking at um, live availability to online travel agents, but, there are lots of really good new options out there which use channel managers um, that, that Andrew mentioned uh, within his presentation. We're actually, as I said at the start of this session, we're actually, um, Andrew, I think you're sh still showing your, your screen. Um, we're, we're actually doing a session on the 25th of, of February where we're bringing four of the really strong operators to have a question and answer session around uh, experience online bookable systems. Not, they're not necessarily the one you should go with, but I think it'll be really interesting for you uh, to, to get some information for. Okay, so just reading through uh, anything else uh, that might be that's coming in. 
Uh, someone else, Andrew, is asking for more information on Amazon Explore. We'll have a look at that and send that on. Um, if the if the questioner, just to, to, to keep your density right, if you could also add in um, an email address, we'll we'll pick that up. Um, Thanks, Patrick. Um, I've just put a link to Amazon Explore in the chat. Okay. So someone's asking about Google My Business. Is it right that uh, providers can't do posts or blogs? Yes, that's very true. Uh, the, the, the Google Knowledge Graph uh, doesn't allow that. There are other sort of optimization tactics on your Google uh, Knowledge Graph that you should consider uh, other than posts for if you're an accommodation provider. In some instances, if you're an accommodation provider with a restaurant, uh, then there is an option, and but it needs to be a standalone um, restaurant Google Knowledge Graph, and you, you're only entitled to that if you've got a separate front door, you know, separate access for a restaurant that stands as a self-entity. So you could use that to post. But also there's the, the, the question and answer section as well. So um, it, you have the functionality to, to seed some questions in there. A great way to establish that is to understand actually within telephone conversations, how, you know, what questions are you actually getting from visitors and use that, answer them if you can on your, on your website, that's the best place, but also you could see them on your Q&A. Um, and without doubt, Google Knowledge um, Graphs, they love images. So post regularly um, your, your images uh, as often as possible. And one small tip, I'm, I can't, I'm not sure if Andrew mentioned it, download um, the Google Knowledge Graph app. Um, that's, that's, that gives you uh, a really sort of on your smartphone, easy access to that on a very regular, regular basis. Um, Someone's asking, would we advise using a social media marketing person? It really, it really is all about what you want to achieve, what budget you've got. I think social media has has lots of um, of good attributes. It's a great way to engage with people. It's a great way to reach out and and um, and speak to people on a regular basis about not only your own business but the surrounding districts. It's uh, there are lots, and that's the piece I think people have got a little bit carried away with the shiny new tool of social media. Yes, it should be part of your your toolkit, but stuff like the old traditional email still is um, one of the best converters. So collecting a database is so important, and also just making sure that you have um, new, fresh, relevant content on your website is another great way of keeping uh, of of getting. Um, getting new visitors by optimizing your your, your content. Um, anything, Andrew, that you want to mention? Any questions you want to answer as we're going along? So, Andrew, here's a question you might want to ask: If you don't have booking on your website, I don't because there are so many variables in the price. Is it possible to make use of channel management to draw in potential clients? Yes, you can sign up with a booking system that has channel management functionality you can decide i don't, i wouldn't i wouldn't encourage this but you can decide not to have that um, booking button in your own website but you can still use the channel management functionality of the booking system to distribute your availability to um all of the um online travel agent slash other platforms that um the booking system is is integrated with or, or works with yes is I it. Think the other part of that is a question that so many variables in the price uh, booking systems have evolved so much now that they really are capable of building in lots of flexibility so if it's something you've looked at not so recently it's maybe worth looking at again because that's one thing they have developed and, and come on massively in terms of their ability to accommodate lots of different um, business models to be able to book online. Someone's asked, how do I claim Google My Business and add content? Um, it's a very easy thing to do. If you just go to um, go on to Chrome, um, Google Chrome, put in Google My Business, it will come up, click on it, and it will give you an option to put in your business name. And it intuitively leads you through how to, to verify. And after that, um, it's very easy to, 
to optimize by adding all your details. It's very, it's it's fairly intuitive. If you want a little bit more, it's well worth sort of googling it again. How to optimize, and also um, something that we're offering at the end of this session is is an opportunity to have a digital review. Uh, our industry relationship managers can sort of give you a bit of a walk through on that as well. Mm. You can another good thing. Download the Google My Business app. There's an app, very handy, and you can do it on your phone. Brian. Okay. Totally unrelated uh, digital question, but fair enough to ask. Are the costs for quality assurance fixed for 2021? Um, we're currently with a proposal. We were able to um, take those fees a, a away last year because of COVID. I think it was it's uh, it was it was a small thing that we could do. It was a significant cost. Um, that that's something we're we're looking at quality assurance for 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 2021 right now, and we should be able to answer you more specifically very shortly. I think yes, yeah, so there's a question here about updating Google My Business from a COVID. Uh, again, it, it's 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 really about going into that. Um, Google have done a very specific way of updating in terms of your times that you're open, whether you're closed. It's there isn't that option to to sort of put in when you will reopen again, which is a little bit of a bummer, particularly when, of course, future bookings are are uh, are key. Uh, one piece of advice I would do is use your website as well to keep that to sort of fully populate that information as much as possible and links uh, for for visitors to be able to find. Uh, the, the the sort of information on a local so in other words a link to the scottish government site is 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 probably very useful for people to understand as we reopen whether there's any tier systems etc so one of the things we're very clearly getting through from information from our our visitors uh, when we do research is that they're desperate for information so don't look at any barriers as being I can't do that. Look at other ways of supplying the information as much as best as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked a question about backlinks. Um, there's no quick and easy answer to this question. I would recommend you have a look at to start off with SEMrush, SEMrush, sorry, SEMrush.com. Um, but yeah, it takes time and effort to um, pursue um, getting backlinks on on other web on other websites, especially backlinks that are uh, relevant to your own business. Um, somebody else has asked a question about uh, get your guide, and they're not taking new businesses at the moment. That's correct. They're currently not. Alternative, I would recommend um, or would mention would be tickets. That's T I Q E T S. I know tickets are taking on uh, new businesses at the moment. Viator also are uh, taking on uh, new business or onboarding new customers just now as well. Um, someone has asked about summarizing the differences between Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram in terms of what uh, what a business should be doing. I know it's really confusing, very difficult to sort of be able to say what where you spend most of your time. I think there's some sorry probably some categorization. Like, first of all. Facebook is the biggest. Uh, I, they are they are by far the massive. So if you were starting off, that's definitely one you sh you should look at. Um, but ultimately, it's been around for a while. There's certain demographics, uh, depending on your visitors, who just won't touch Facebook because it's passe. It's not it's not for them. It's not cool enough. And um, Instagram, from a you know, if you've got a very a product that works really well visually, if you're able to put across um, some 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 really good photography on it that tends to be a really good platform there for and then and of course tourism is 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 so well um, suited to that Instagrams is 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 one to look at and Twitter Twitter is very much an information seeking uh, uh, platform it's it's it is difficult to insert uh, into it um, uh, sort of a, a tourism conversation. One other thing that's that over the COVID period is that Google has stopped using Twitter as a, a an optimization tool, i.e., the Wharton's uh, that stopped using it as a feed on on Google. So it is 
it would be always one that we would say you, you've got to use it even if you've struggled a little bit with it because it had a search engine optimization uh, element to it. So that, that's taken away at the moment. So it doesn't have that benefit. But like like everything is about if your audience sits in there, you just got to it's it's very much about try, tested, see what engagement you're getting. Is the engagement with the type what you think is your core market? If it is, then keep working on it and testing and trying it. Um, if it's if it's some randomers who are trying to sell to you, then I'll, uh, in the majority, then it might not be the platform for you to continue to use. Um, Somebody's asked uh, how we apply for Visit Scotland Quality Assurance. I'll share a link just now in the chat so that you'll get that. I, there's loads of questions asking about how you're going to see this or is there a possibility of watching this again? We're going to post this um, presentation and it's recording on uh, visitscotland.org. We're also uh, going to, it will be posted also on Business Gateway. So we, it normally takes us around 10 days to get it uploaded as a video and then distributed. So uh, look out for it then. Someone is asking, what is Google Knowledge Graph? It's, it's, it's effectively Google trying to answer, uh, a, I suppose, in a sense, take the space where they're actually anticipating the best possible answer for someone looking for, say, accommodation or experience, and they're using the content that you're giving them by presenting it uh, on page one. Uh, so for any business, having your Google uh, biz Google business listing, which is what powers your Google knowledge graph. You having that claim verified and updated is really, really important. Um, I'll very quickly share my screen, Patrick, so that people can see what it actually looks like. Um, it's this bit here, the chocolate aim on the right hand side. Can, I hope you all can see that. That's Google knowledge graph knowledge panel we would love you know this is a free webinar the only thing we ask of you is that you give us some feedback we're about to do a series of 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 more workshops we would love to have your information telling us how how good these have been what ones you would like to uh, be included in the future and here on the right hand side um, a feedback form if you could click on that uh, using the code EO74, that would be really, uh, we'd really appreciate you sending that um, evaluation back to us and feedback. 